set our hearts on one accord because it is time to worship the Lord our God. Hallelujah. I know that God's been good to me this week, and I know he's been good to you. Each and every day, he gives us a reason to worship, to praise him. Our psalm today is Psalm 9 and 9 and 10, and it says this of our God. The Lord is a refuge for the oppressed, a stronghold in times of trouble. Those who know your name trust in you, for you, Lord, have never forsaken those who seek you. Hallelujah. That's the reason why we worship. That's the reason why we praise him because he's good all the time and he has never ever forsaken anyone on earth who seek him, who trust in him. So let's set our hearts on one accord corporately today to worship. Let's lift holy hands to worship. I'm going to lead us in prayer. Father God, in the name of Jesus, you are a refuge for the oppressed. You are a stronghold for those in trouble, God. We thank you, Father, because we know that we can trust in you, Father God. You're trustworthy. You're faithful. You're good. Your mercies are renewed every single morning and not ever, Lord, have you forsaken anyone who, who looks to you, Father God. You're just so good. It wasn't enough for you to save us, Father God, for you so loved the world that you gave your only begotten Son. You not only saved us and put us in right relationship with you, with you, Father, but you said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. So we bless you. We worship you. We give you the highest praise this morning. We say hallelujah to your holy name, Father God. There is none so faithful, none so good, none so loving. So we worship you corporately today, Father, in the blessed name of Jesus. Amen. Come on, lift up the name of Jesus in this place. Come on, let's chase after him like we've never chased after him before. Somebody shout hallelujah in this place. I can't hear you. Come on, let's go. Somebody shout he's worthy.
thank you, nothing can stop your praise. Hallelujah. Every idol, you lay it down. Every wall that you've built up, you lay it down. God, you can have all of us today. Come on, give him your all. What does your surrender look like? Come on, lift up your hands. Come on, totally surrender. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Come and tear down these walls I've built up. Every wall I've built up. Every wall I've built up. And you deserve every piece of my heart. Every piece of my heart. Every piece of my heart. Lord, I am trusting that you are faithful, Father, and all that you have is good. You're a generous giver, your love like no other. Tear down this wall. 
walls are built. God, we surrender. Every wall are built. Every wall are built. Every idol we lay it down. You deserve every piece of my. Every piece of my. Every piece of my heart. God, we give you all of us. Every hidden issue. We surrender our hearts to you. We give it all. Everything that's hidden, every hidden sin. All the secrets that we keep to ourselves, but only you know. Hallelujah. Only you know, God. We give it all to you today. Somebody give it all to him. Come on, come on. Every wall, every wall. You know the walls that you build up. Tear it down. God, come and tear it down. Come and tear it down, 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 tear it down. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Resurrender, resurrender. Every wall, every wall. Everybody say, come. separate you from anything in our lives. Hallelujah. Tear it down. Tear it down. Tear it down. Tear it down. Don't stop your praise. Don't stop your worship here. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise your name. We lift you up because you're worthy. You deserve this praise. We thank you. We glorify you, God. We haven't been here in seven days, God, but you've kept us for more than that. So we thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. We thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is the time that we pray at crossroads. This is an opportunity for us to release our cares on God because he cares about us. So we want to take this opportunity to offer you to come up. Come up to the altar if you are in need. up to the offer. The, the altar is open to you. It is open to you. If you are watching online, we want to agree with you today. So Father, we thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for just your mercy and your grace that we see today, God. We thank you that this is the day that you have made. 
And there's so much in that, God, because you made it. So you rule over this day. You rule over our lives. And we thank you, Father. Father, every care that is in this room, Father, we give it to you, Father. Your word says that you care about the details of our lives. So we give you every care that we have, God. Every care that is on our minds, every care that is on our hearts, Father. Father, we even call you healer for those that need healing today, God. We thank you, Lord. For your word says that if we abide in you, you will abide in us. Father, we know that the only thing that we need to be is the branch, and that is to do nothing but to stay close to you, God. So we draw close to you today. We draw close to you and ask you, Lord God, to cover us, to give us peace that passes our understanding, Lord. The cares that we have of this world, God. Father, we ask that you just cover our minds. Give us strength, Father. Your word says that the strength of the Lord, the strength of the Lord is our joy, Lord. So we just thank you, Lord that we have a God that mediates for us, that cares for us, that loves us, and that keeps us, Lord. So we just thank you, and we give it to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You all can have your seats at this time. Well, good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning. Hey, welcome to those of you all here in person. Welcome to those those of you all joining us online. Welcome here to another Sunday here at Crossroads Church. We're so excited and so glad to have you all with us for service this morning. To those of you all tuned in online, if it's your very first time attending with us, hey, feel free to type in new in the comment section, and one of our staff members will reach out to everyone here in person. If it's your very first time attending here at Crossroads, welcome. We want to make sure we give a special welcome to you all. And we want to make sure we connect with you and get to know you a little bit better. So if you would, if it's your first time, please visit the Central Hub Station located at the back of the building. We've got one of our staff members eager and ready to get to know you a little bit more and give you some more information about our church. Well, as always, you all, I want to make sure you stay up to date with every announcement here at Crossroads Church. So first off, we want to make sure we give you a friendly reminder that we're active each and every week on social media. So if you've got Instagram or if you've got Facebook, you can follow us online and stay up to date using either one of those platforms at our social media handle, which is at Crossroads ATL. So again, Crossroads ATL on Instagram and on Facebook, where we post all of our updates on a week-to-week basis. Well, we do have one major important announcement for you all, is that we are about to celebrate Easter Sunday. We're about to celebrate Easter. I got a little tongue tied there. My bad, y'all. Got a little tongue tied there. But Sunday, March 31st, hey, we're so excited for Easter Sunday. And we know Easter Sunday is the Sunday where you can invite everybody who has not been to church in a while. Amen. So we want to make sure you all remember to invite, invite, invite. Use that as an opportunity to share the news about God. Use that as an opportunity to get someone that you know needs to be here. Bring them there because you never know how that Easter Sunday could affect them in a powerful way. So, again, we're encouraging everyone to invite, invite, invite. We're going to have a bunch of fun, and we want to make sure that you all are there for Easter Sunday. Again, Crossroads fam, it's great to see each and every one of you all again here today. Right now, let's just go ahead and stand up, and let's fellowship and greet one another. Amen. All right, so next Sunday, somebody say next Sunday. Sunday. It's Compassion Sunday for us. And um, we're just, we're, we're, we're believing God that he's going to touch your mind, your heart to partner with some family in another part of the world to be, um, to be a sponsor. $43 a month. Did y'all see how much they get for just 43? Yeah. Did y'all see that? Yeah. Y'all too quiet for me. Y'all see that? Yeah. For $43 a month, they can go to school, they can feed their family, they can get clean water. That, you know what that clean water includes? They can take baths. What would you give for a bath? Well, praise the Lord. I don't know. Is this Crossroads? I mean, I think I would, we left Crossroads at NPC over there somewhere. I mean, praise the Lord. Y'all way too quiet for me. Way too quiet. But so, so next Sunday, somebody say next Sunday. 
So next Sunday is Palm Sunday. And so what we're going to be doing is that we are going to be celebrating compassion. We're going to give you the opportunity to sponsor a child. Um, for us, about two years ago, you know, um, it, just a, it just came on me, an urge. I, I wanted to do more. I give, me and my wife give. We give over 20% of our salary to our church in tithes and offerings. And um, I just wanted to do more. And I said, Lord, how can I give to somebody that can't give back to me? Because God tells us, make sure you take care of the poor. What do we do to take care of the poor? We help them be poor no more. Because somebody said, don't be poor no more. That's right. Don't, I mean, listen, I don't want a handout. I want a change of life. We want to be able to change your lives, so that's what we're going to do. So, so I, I adopted this kid. I, I told our staff today, I adopted this kid. He kind of looked like me when I was a kid. So uh, I said, I like, I like him. I don't even know him. He lived in Togo, Africa. Never been there. Never even heard of it until I saw him. That's where he lives. And I sponsor. We've been sponsoring about two years now. He writes me letters. I forget the right back. Y'all forgive me. I'm going to write him <laughs> back, you know. <laughs> I think I did it one time, but, I, you know, I get busy and I just forget. But look, he get, his, he get the money every month. <laughs> they get paid. <laughs> Ooh, thank you, Jesus. Hey, look, I'm, I'm quite sure he'd rather get that paid than that card. <laughs> Come on, man. What if your, what if, listen, what if your job going to give you a thank you card? Like, here you go. I ain't going to pay you, but here you go you a thank you card. You'd be like, what? <laughs> you ready to fight, won't you? <laughs> no, but so, so anyway, that's, that's next week. My mother-in-law is going to be handling it. She's going to be handling it. I think we're going to have uh, those handouts. We'll have a table back there. You'll be able to look through them grab somebody and sponsor someone, and uh, we'll do it all together as a family. Amen? Amen. All right, so t today is Vision Sunday here at Crossroads. Go ahead, Avery. Let me tell you about where we are, because y'all know we've been, for the last month or two, we've been going through a little bit of fire. You ended up going through fire? Well, we have as a church. We've been going through some fire. But we'll, so let's talk about what's new. First of all, uh, go ahead, next, the next slide. We are committed to uh, standing together in faith. We said that's what we're going to do, right? We're going to stand together in faith. Go ahead. So what are we doing? Instead of focusing on so much of a building, we're focusing on community. We want to build community. Somebody say build community. Build community. That means we want to add new people to our church, right? Now, we know if everybody come, we, want, we, we probably got to put out chairs. But we want to add people to our church. And we're depending on you to use your hula hoop. Right. You remember we, have y'all forgot the hula hoop? No, okay, just in case you don't, you, you've never been here, I don't have a hula hoop, but we pretend this is one. In your circle of life, you have influence on somebody. Yeah. All we say is reach out and touch somebody that's connected to you. Whether they're connected to you on your job, or in your home, your family, reach out to them. Invite them to your church. Invite them to come worship. Not come to church, but to what? Worship. worship. We come to do what? Worship. We come to worship. We don't come to church. We the church. We're here to worship God. Right? So go ahead. So we want to build communities. That's what we're doing. So we encourage everybody to join a life group. Somebody say life group. life group. Now, if you ain't in one now, you want to get one, you better do quick. You better move quick. Because they're filling up and they're growing. Right? And, and if your friend won't come to church, invite them to your life group. Hey, we're doing this. You know, I think we're going into week number three now. Some groups are going in week number two. And we're going in. And so, um, yeah, it's, gonna be, it's been real, real good. God is blessing us. He's, he's, he's bonding us together. That's what we want. Right now, listen, life group don't take the place of church. I mean, okay, worship. Amen. So when y'all get in the life group, make sure all the folks in your group know, hey, where were you at Sunday? We miss you. Right. Pray the Lord. All right. Go ahead. What else is next? All right. And then again, invite, 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 because we're looking for Crossroads Chris, which is people just like you. Amen. Just like you. Now, what I said to our, our leadership team this morning, I'm going to say it to you all at the church. We need free agents. We need people who can take our church to the next level. So we need people just like you. These teams now in the professional league, especially in the football, they're adding new people. Why? They want to take their teams to the next level. God does the same thing with his church. He sends people to churches and say, help them go to the next level. Okay, praise the Lord. So, that, so somebody say invite. invite. All right, come on, go ahead, Avery. So that's what we're doing. We're focused on people. All right, is that, the, that it? That's all the talk? Okay, good. So listen, so we, we want our own building, right? So it's no accident that God keeps allowing us to go to these gyms. It's the second gym we've been in. Because I told you all, when we build, we're not building, a, we're not building no church. Okay. We ain't build, uh, somebody said, we ain't building no church. We're going to build a building. And we're going to use it, and we're going to rent that thing. And we're going to let it make money for us. Come on. 
We, we're not consumer-minded in our church. We're not. We're owner, we have an ownership mindset. So we're going to build a building. And this is, now we use it, we use it like a, a basketball court because we're in here and y'all can kind of get it, y'all can get it, right? But uh, we're going to have some classrooms. We'll take probably a little bit more than half of the sanctuary. This is 270 uh, people. Now all this, we don't have a choir, so that's dead. So we'll change this, probably more classrooms and all that. This is just an example of some things that we're, we're looking to do. I just want to give you the vision of what it's going to take for us to do this. Y'all with me? Yes, sir. All right. So we'll have classrooms. Yeah, so, so this is what it could look like. I'm going to say it's going to look like this. Take the cross down. Take the cross down. Take that cross down. Praise the Lord. But we're going to build a building, and it's going to see. You see it says multi-purpose, gymnasium, sanctuary, education, fellowship. That's what it's going to be. That's what it's going to be. Y'all got me? Yeah. Somebody with me, man. Y'all, just y'all, y'all, I need some, I need some agreement partners. Come on, agreement partners. So that's what it's going to look like. So what is it going to take? Now, let me just tell you, just for the, what, what's the kind of building, Mike, uh, we're looking for? Prefab. Prefab. It looks, you know, it looks like brick and all that, but it's prefab. It's something like this. This is a little sturdier, though, because it's, it's built a long time ago. But a prefab building, we can be able to make it look really, really good on the outside. This, I think, was like 135000 just for the outside structure, not the insides where you got to put up the pipes and all that stuff, okay? And put in walls and, and doors, just the outside, the shell of it. It's like 135000 That's all. Come on, man. Y'all need to be like, who praise the Lord, Pastor. Yes. Okay, one day. I'm going to get me some excited for. All right, go ahead. What's the next one? That's what it's going to take. Listen to me. This is where we have been believing God for quite some time. This is all we need a week. One week. $5,200 per week. Somebody say per week. Per week. That's nothing. <laughs> Come on, man. That is that. You, you, you probably would be like, oh, oh, that's it, Pastor. Praise the Lord. You could say that out loud. Y'all know that right here. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. That's it. Now, so, so all we need is you to listen, pray with us. Stand in faith with us and give. That's what we need on a consistent basis. Don't skip, don't, 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 don't put God at the back of the line of your life and you do all that stuff and you don't give God nothing. No, no, no. Listen, I, I told you all before, don't give him leftovers. Okay. I, I wish I can, I ain't got time to preach. I'll preach later. But that's all we need. So I got some agreement partners? All right. So, so it's receiving time. That's our mission statement. For, it's receiving time here at Crossroads. Listen, there's three ways you can give at our church. You can give uh, using Crossroads ATL, which is a cash app, at a dollar sign Crossroads ATL, or you can give at crossroadsatl.com slash give, or if you want to give by cash or check, you can do either one of those as well. So I'll give you a, a half a second to get to, to your offering and, and your giving. So listen, so as we, when we come into worship, have your, have your, 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 your offering ready. Babe, you have an envelope? Hang on. I think I'm, I don't know. Anybody got an envelope? Ma, you got an envelope? No? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I, I just... Oh, it's fe feel, feel a little heavy. Praise the Lord, girl. That... <laughs> I'm just having fun. All right. So listen, um, I was going to say something really good after, and I just forgot. Oh, Siobhan, you messed me up. But, but listen, so again, that's what we do together. We stand together. We're believing. And I'm going to tell you, man, let's just keep pushing. Let's just keep pushing. And uh, my, my, wife, my wife told me that God spoke to her during praise and worship and told her to get ready for the swell. Amen. To get ready for the swell. So, so thank you for one, one, one agreement partner. Praise God. Amen. Listen, your husband might be in the swell. You better clap. Come on. Your wife might be in the, in the swell. You better be, yeah, yeah. Come on, praise the Lord. I was sitting here like, I don't know. It was a swell. Yeah. You, better get, you better get ready. Get yourself ready. Some of y'all ain't ready, praise the Lord. All right. That's, that's another time. All right, kids. So, so uh, do everybody have any envelopes? I, I know we, we were short, so y'all got to have to repeat after me. Ready? Say, Father, Father. we thank you. thank you. I need my eyes. Hold on, y'all. I can't see none of that. <laughs> I'm just having fun. Can I have some fun in worship? All right, here we go. Say, we thank you for your love and faithfulness toward us. Our lives belong to you. We're obedient to your word. Therefore, we're blessed in our homes, in our relationships, 
in our finances. We give the best. We live the best. We have the best according to your word. And we win all the time. And all the time, we win. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. You may have your seats. The ushers are going to come around. Or actually, stay standing. We're going to pray. We're going to pray as they come around. You can go ahead and pass your offerings over to the center aisle. They're going to come around and uh, take up the offerings. And then we're going to pray over it. And then we're going to go and um, uh, we're going to get right into the word. Amen. Here we go. Here we go. You can just combine them. Just come on. There you go. Good. So, Father, we thank you for who you are, what you've done for us, your great grace, your love. Thank you for the faithfulness of your people that give to support your house. This house belongs to you. It's not mine. It's not my wife's. It's not my family's. It's your house. You built it. You, you're guiding it. You're leading us. We thank you as we confess Psalms 112. Blessed is the man who fears the Lord, who finds great delight in his commands. His children will be mighty in the land. The generation of the upright will be blessed. And wealth and riches are in his house. We thank you for the wealth and riches that's assigned to this house so that we might be a blessing and help the poor. We thank you in Jesus' name. Everybody say amen. That wasn't everybody. Everybody say amen. amen. You may have your seats. Thank you all for coming. Thank you for uh, getting up this morning and coming to the house of the Lord to worship. We're, on a, we're in a teaching series, and the name of that series is called Fearing the Wrong Things. Was anybody here last week? Did y'all did y'all get y'all get anything out of it? Yes, All right. I hope you went back online and and, and uh, watched fearing the wrong things. And fear, we said last week, fear is an emotion, or it's a strategy that Satan uses to control the world. Now listen, y'all got to log in this morning because we're gonna talk about fearing time. You got to lock in. You can't be distracted. You can't have people talking to you. They do just just push them and say, "Leave me alone. I'm, I'm listening." So you gotta lock in. Right? Because we know fear controls the world. And fear, the only reason fear exists is because of what? Anybody know? Y'all forgot? Oh, Lord. I, got, I ain't must be doing a good job teaching something. The only reason fear exists is because of death. Death. If there was no death, there would be no fear. What are we afraid of? Dying. We're, what are we afraid of the most? Dying. Oh, Lord. Yeah. The thing about fear is that it can't stop things from happening in your life. It can't. But what it tries to do or what it attempts to do is to stop you from believing and fighting so that you, can't, you won't believe and, and fight for the, the, thing, the right things to be happening in your life. Last week we talked about David who said, I fear no evil. Now, David lived during a different time than we live. They didn't have a police department when David was alive. They didn't have a military. Well, they, didn't have, they had a military, but not like our military. Right? So David, when he says, I fear no evil, you know what he's talking about? He's talking about they can just pop up anytime and start shooting, kind of like we are now, all these vigilante type shootings that we're having. That's what happened back in David's day. Of course, they didn't have guns. Right? So, but David says, I fear no evil. Now, he couldn't stop trouble from coming. He couldn't. Just like me and you can't stop trouble from coming. But what he could, but, but, but listen, he could not even stop from being afraid. But what he could do, what he could do was he not allow fear to intimidate him and cause him to react a certain way, like it does with us. Y'all here with me today? Yeah. I, when I was in second grade, I'll tell you all the story. When I was in second grade, I was a class clown. Any class clowns in here? No, I was the only class clown. Thank you. All the, all the two, two, three, four brothers in the back. The ladies have never said they were class clowns. <laughs> but some of them were class clowns. Linda, praise the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> But when I was in second grade, one day we was having, we were eating we were in the lunchroom, we were eating, we were having fried chicken. Now back in our day, you know, we had fried chicken on the bone, you understand? So that means they fried it while they were there. There was no nuggets. We had, no, nuggets weren't even invented during that time. I don't know what year they invented nuggets, but they were not at our school. So we, and I was eating my chicken, <clears throat> and I choked. And I jumped up, grabbed my throat, it was like, like this, and I was literally choking. And all the kids started laughing because they thought I was clowning. And my teacher screamed, sit down. You know, back in them days. <laughs> they can, listen, they could beat you. I mean, I used to beat my behind all the time. I used to beat my behind. And then call my mom and tell her, we beat him. She said, beat him again. <laughs> but, but I, and I, and I, I mean, I, I'm choking. And I don't know what I did to get that chicken lodged out of my throat. But I did something. I shook my head, did something. I don't know what I did. 
but I, I did something to get it lodged out of my throat. And then I sat down. But when I sat down, I started crying because it scared the heebie-jeebies out of me. Y'all know heebie-jeebies? Anyway, praise God. <clears throat> and so my teacher came over there, and she was trying to say, hey, what happened, babe? What happened to him? Why are you crying? Like, you too late. Screaming at me and all that. <laughs> but, but I told her what happened. I said I was choking. And she, she you know, apologized, all that type of stuff. But, but it, it, it scared me to the, to the degree was I, would, I, I had a hard time taking medicine. Even until this day, my wife laughs at me. Because every now and then when I got to take something, I'd be like, it take, it take me like eight swallows to get it down. Why? Because 40 years ago, I had one incident. And fear came into that space in my life. So what's it do? It tries to intimidate me. So every time I want to swallow something, you're going to choke. Yeah, here. Yeah, see, see, what's important for us to understand, as I said this last week, the most important thing for us in life is to know God. To know God because it's, it's his presence, his his, listen, it's his presence in our thoughts, it's his presence in our heart, it's his presence in our mind that helps us overcome the evil threats of fear. Why am I f- afraid to swallow an aspirin? I remember mean, one time my mom was almost about to beat me because I was scared to swallow them. I had a cold, I had the flu, and I wouldn't take the medicine because I was scared I would choke. And it all came back from second grade. Y- y'all see what I mean? You see how the culture sets the stage for you to fear? Y'all got to lock in today because we're going to take a ride. Because we're talking about fear and time. Yeah, and, and see what fear does when it comes to time, fear comes to bother you and ask you questions you can't answer about your life. Or to ask you questions about something you've gave, given to God, you are believing God, you want it to happen, and it ain't happened. So fear comes and tells you it ain't going to happen. <sighs> because we all worry. All right. I'm going to go to Pentecostal Church down the street. Well, those folk will say amen. I mean, they'll say amen. Uh, we, we all worry, don't we? We, we worry. Come on, we all we don't, we worry. Uh, so, but, but, but how do we overcome this thing, man? How do, how do we do it? I, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you how you overcome this fear of time. Because some of you all think you're on the clock when it comes to husbands and wives. I want to get married. I gotta, I'm, 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 I'm pushing 30. Hey, listen, man, I'm, I'm going to help you today. L- listen to me. It's called the better principle. Somebody said better. better. My. Lord, I, Lord, I can't communicate this the way you gave it to me. You're going to have to help me the best I can. But listen to me. This is where your faith has to be when it comes to dealing with the fear of time and the fear of things not happening in your life. Listen, if God don't bring him or her, or if God don't allow it to happen, you have to know he has better. This is it. That's how you overcome fear of time. Well, Lord, what's going on? It ain't happened. If that one failed, this failed. Oh, my God. No, no, no. Listen, I got better for you. Better. It's the better principle. I, I begin to talk myself all the time. I talk about, I'm talking to myself, encouraging myself. Like, hey, man, God got better. Better's coming. Better, better, better. I got biblical proof to show you better. See, because, see, Satan's one of his trump cards is time. This is supposed to be happening, Lord. It ain't happening. What's going to happen? Don't worry about it. I got better. See, you can't believe that if you don't know who you're dealing with. I got to help you understand who you're dealing with. Listen to this. Let's let's just read this. This is Jeremiah. I think you have this in your notes. Some of these scriptures you might not have in your notes, so just if you don't, just write down the address. You can go back and look at it later. But listen to what Jeremiah said, 9, 23, and 24. He says, this is what the Lord says. Don't let the wise boast in their wisdom. Or the powerful boast in their power. Or the rich boast in their riches. Listen now. But those who wish to boast should boast in this alone. Listen. That they truly know me. And understand that I am the Lord who demonstrates unfailing love and who brings justice and righteousness to the earth. And I delight in these things. I, the Lord, have spoken. You see that? So Jeremiah said, hey, listen. If you, if you want to boast, if you got something to really boast about, boast that you know me. I tell y'all, I better lock in. Listen, I'm going to help you this morning if you lock in. Boast about you know who I am. I am in relationship with the, with the God who is in control of everything. He's con- Listen, he is controlling everything. He's conducting everything. I don't care about the election. I ain't worried about it because I know who's in control. 
I know he's the one that's doing it. He's putting one up and setting them down. Y'all say, oh, my God, the election, we got to vote. We got to, okay, cool. When we, when we finish doing all that, it's God is the one who puts one up and puts another down. Yeah. I'll show you in the scriptures. <laughs> Come on, man. Now, listen, I got to review. Can I review real quick? Because y'all didn't, y'all didn't even remember death, so I got to review. I thought I, I thought I could skip this part. So I'm going to skip that part because they're going to remember that. No, nah, no. Nah. All right, there's two types of fear. We talked about this last week. There's two types of fear. There's worldly fear. Y'all see that? What is that? That's dread. That's panic. That's anxiety you feel. When you're facing the unknown, when you're facing difficult situation, tough challenges in your life, that's what comes on you. And fear talks. Don't it? Why? Because it's trying to get you to focus on the wrong things. Focus on what's not happening. That's not what God wants you to do. He wants you to focus on him. Lord, what am I to look at me? When, when, the, when the disciples was in the boat, Jesus told them, go to the other side. They got on, they got in a, a storm hit. And Jesus is walking on the, walking on the water. They're like, oh, my God. Okay. Peter, Peter said, can I come? Yeah, come. When Peter got on the water, he, he, he got in trouble when he took his eyes off Jesus. When he started looking at everything else except for God. Come on, man. What does it take for you to pray first? Some of you will grab the medicine b- bottle before you start praying. Don't ever do that. Pray first. Somebody say, pray first. Come on, man. Y'all got to get with me. I'm trying to lock in here. Y'all ain't helping me out. You got to pray first. (laughs) You got to pray first. Why? Listen, you you know why? Because you you know what? what, You're you're sending a signal to sickness, this evil culture. You're telling it. Hey, listen, my focus is on God. And everything that I focus, I do, everything about my life starts with him. Thank you, Noah. Yeah, man, amen. He says, amen, Pastor. That's right. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Come on. Because nothing makes you question God more than fear. Nothing. Nothing makes you question God more than fear. Nothing. We be, Lord, what's going on? Oh, Lord. You got you to get, you got to, <laughs> listen, you got to get your focus right. Focus on him. All right, all right, the next, the, the other second type of fear is biblical fear. Somebody say biblical fear. Biblical fear. What is that? That's, that? That is the reverential awareness. Listen, this is good. Rever, reverential awareness that God is our Father and He is watching and evaluating everything we think, say, and do. Come on, man. Come on. Come on. Timothy said like this. He, he said, listen, man. He said, for God has not given a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and of a sound mind. You see that? So, so he, if anything else is happening in your life except for power, love, sound mind, you know it's not from God. No, because we, we I said this last week, we in our country, we're too full of ourselves. We're too arrogant. We're so arrogant that we, we'll jump into politics and divide the church. And forget about Jesus because we put him on the back row. No, what does he want us to do? What do you want us to say, Lord? We live for you. We work for you. We're, we're, we're living out your assignment. What do you want me to do? Come on. We, we, have, we have left the fear of God somewhere else. Come on, man. No, there, there's certain things I don't do because I fear him. And that, that's not dread like we talked about. That's not that. No, that's, that's a respect and a love. When I met Leslie, I was not fornicating. I had stopped. The Lord bless me. Praise the Lord. Y'all knew I was a fornicator. I told y'all. I had stopped fornicating. Why? Because I fell in love with God and I respected him. I went to a party one time and I was with this young lady and we were in boyfriend, girlfriend. You know, she, she had a crush on me and I was just like, hey, I was bored. To be honest. I was bored. I mean, come on, man. Y'all, done, y'all be looking at me like y'all crazy. I know y'all done did it before. <laughs> I ain't the only one been bored. Like, okay, I go. Come on. I was just bored. I don't want to be on. So I was bored, and I was with, and we were, and, and you know, the music was cool and all that, and I didn't see, I had stopped giving, I had given up that worldly music. I wasn't listening to it. And I was just chilling, man, and chilling. She was trying to, you know, like, hey, you know, want to get close? No, I, I'm good. I, she said, you want to get, I said, I, I, I got to go. <sighs> how does that happen, man? You know how it happens? It's when you develop a reverential fear, meaning that you know that he's watching you. He's evaluating you. Now, God ain't no, he ain't no slave master. He ain't there to talk about, what you doing? You better stop. He ain't doing that. He's saying, hey, that's not good for you. 
I have better for you. You need to listen to me because you're headed for trouble. That's what he says. All right. We got to go. So our focus today is time. Somebody say time. Listen to what Ecclesiastes 3, 1 through 2 says. Listen to this. It says, there is a time for everything and a season for every activity. Listen, under the, under the heavens, a time to be born and a time to die. Now, we, we can go on because, y'all, if you keep reading, it, it tells you a time for everything, right? Time to have babies, time to not have babies. Time, to, <laughs> time for everything. But what does that mean? What does that mean for us? And why does the enemy use it to make us fear? What's time? See, I, yeah, now, this is my definition. If y'all see this, y'all know they stole it, all right? <laughs> Listen, time is this. It's a sequence of events, days, or activities that help us understand life, to enjoy life, and experience God. That's what time is. If you notice in the scriptures, we're going to talk about Daniel. If you notice in the scriptures, you'll see they talk about certain things happen when King so and so was, when King so and so was in, was reigning. This is what happened. What are they talking about? They're talking about events. They call God the ancient of what? Days. So, so they say he's bigger than time. So when we talk about time, we're really looking to events and things that happen in our life. When we, listen, if you're thinking about tomorrow, you're thinking about something that's going to happen in tomorrow. You're thinking about time. So the enemy comes, and what he does, he tries to make us afraid of days, activities, experiences that, that are happening or not happening in our lives. And that's not the will of God, because God didn't create time for us to fear it. He created time for us to enjoy it. The scriptures, listen, the scriptures give us instructions about time. He said, it says, don't be a fool, manage your time well. Manage your days well. Manage the events in your lives, the activities that's going to happen. Manage them well. Because you ain't going to have it all the time. All right, let me read this. This is Ephesians 5, uh, 15 through 17. Listen to what it says. It says, so be careful how you live. All right, he's talking about time. Be careful how you live. Y'all with me this morning? He said, listen, be mindful of your steps. Don't run around like idiots. That's just, this is the uh, voice version of the Bible, you know what I mean? So, so it, it sounds like, you know, your mom and them talking. That's all. It says, don't, don't run around like idiots as the rest of the world does. Instead, listen, walk as the wise. Make the most of every living and breathing moment because these, ev- these are evil what? Time. He's saying what? These are evil days, events, and activities. Come on, y'all can't tell. We don't live in that time. And the scripture itself, he said, don't be, don't be, don't be, don't be, don't be like an idiot. They don't, it's not mindful of the days and the activities of things that are happening. Yeah. So understand this. Listen, so understand and be confident in God's will and don't live thoughtlessly. Y'all with me today? Yes. So, so, so the people, that's us as Christians, should be us. Those who know their God are loved and cared for by him. So I don't have to fear time. I don't have to. Why? Because I know God, I'm loved by him, and he cares for me. So God is in my life to make sure certain things take place in my life. Come on, y'all. Hey, listen, this ain't a philosophy class. We ain't, we're not here just thinking. No, no, no. We're here to hear the word of the Lord and to hear it so we can apply it to our lives. Y'all here? Yes. All right? So God is in our lives to make sure his plan takes place in your life. All right. Come on. Okay, so let me read the scripture, and we're going to jump in because we're, we're, we're using Daniel and uh, uh, Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego. If you don't know, they were Hebrew boys who lived in Judah. And uh, they, they were taken into captivity to, what was it? What was it? Where, were they, where did they go? Was it uh, Babylon, Babylonian? They went, they went to Babylon. And so uh, 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 God allowed all that to happen. So when, listen, so when Daniel wrote his book, he wrote his book in retrospect. So he, in other words, he, he went back, look and say, this is what happened. Let me, show, let me tell y'all what happened so that we can see all the events happen and how God was in control. All this happened, but look, God was in control. This happened, but God was in control. Listen to what this said. Let me, let me, let me, we're going to break this thing down. Listen to this. This, this, this is good. Listen, this is uh, uh, Daniel 2, 19 to 22. This is all right. I'm going to teach you all right. Y'all understand? Y'all with me? Okay. Listen. So it says, that, that, that night, 
the secret was revealed to Daniel in a vision. Listen. Then Daniel praised the God of heaven. Listen to what he said. He said, praise the name of God forever and ever, for, for he has all wisdom and power. Listen, y'all. He controls the course of world events. He removes kings or presidents of the United States. He sets up other kings or presidents of the United States. He gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to scholars. He reveals deep and mysterious things and knows what lies hidden in darkness, though he is surrounded by light. You see that? So da Daniel said, hey, this is how this thing works. Ain't nobody doing, no, ain't, no, ain't none of y'all in control. <laughs> That's what he said. He said, hey, let, let, me show, let me show you how this thing works. Everything you think is happening is in, no, no, no. That's not how it was in control. God is behind the scene in control of it. That's what Daniel's telling us. He said, hey, he's the one that put one, he's the one that sets one down. He is the one. So I don't have to walk around here being afraid of time. Well, it might not happen. No, no. I, gotta, I, I have to understand who's behind the scene making things operate. Now, you got to remember, Daniel was a slave in a foreign country with three other men that he loved, like his brothers. They were in a foreign country. They were slaves. And he's writing this. You don't write that when you're a slave. Help! Somebody needs to come help us. <laughs> can you get this to the priest? Who, who the prophet left over in Israel? Judah, can you make sure that he gets? No, that's what da Daniel said. Hey, listen, uh -uh, the secret was revealed. Daniel praised God for Why? Praise to him because he controls the course of life. Y'all got to get that. If you, listen, I can't go any further if you're going to get that. He controlled the course of the life. All right, so let's talk about it. How will, how will our pursuit, because again, our goal in life is to know God. Somebody say to know God. Ask yourself, do I really know God? I mean, come on, man. Do I really, really, truly know God? I mean, examine yourself. Do you know God? Do you really, truly know God? What's your proof? What's your proof you know, you know who God is? Give me some proof. What, what is it? Come on, man. Can, can somebody walk up to you and say something about the scriptures and you don't not know what they're talking about? Can you defend your faith? Or you run scared when somebody come up and say, you know what the Bible say? That, uh, like, we were in the mall one time. Where were we at, lads? We what mall? One of them crazy mall. We were in the mall, and they're going to walk up to me talking about something. Uh, yeah, can we talk to you about the Bible? And they start talking about uh, um, Mother Earth, a mother spirit or something, mother something. I knew exactly what they were talking about. It's in the scriptures. But it's all, it's all idol worship. And so they're going to come to me and quote, because they can quote five scriptures. They thought they, I said, listen, what all that, what y'all said? All that stuff is wrong. And I can prove it to you in scripture. So they started quoting, I was quoting. And I said, let me tell you how you take that out of context. <laughs> and then guess what they want to do, Mike? They ain't want to talk to me no more. They ain't want to talk no more. They want to run. Like, we got to go because you want to argue. I'm not arguing. You brought it up. <laughs> no, listen. But as Christians, can we defend our faith? Come on. I, I say this to us crossroad all the time. Your spiritual growth is your responsibility. You have to want to know. Listen, if you want to know God, he's not hiding I told y'all, I told y'all before, me and my wife have been going through some, some tough times. It's been tough. So I increased my time with God. I've been increasing my time with God. I pray, get up every morning, I pray. At least one hour. I pray. Got up this morning, six something, because my wife woke me up at five. I couldn't wait to go back to sleep as well. <laughs> and so I, I got up, went to my prayer closet and prayed. I had to increase. Why? What else am I going to do? You either going to worry or you going to spend more time with God? You either gonna get closer to God or you're gonna do something different. You're gonna run and talk to everybody out. No, none of that works. But I increase my time. Hey, I gotta I gotta get closer to God. I gotta get closer to God. So what's stopping us from knowing him? All right, we gotta get we ain't gonna get through with this, but we're gonna do our best. Praise the Lord. How how will our, our pursuit of God help us overcome the fear of time? Because God invites us, hey, come get to know me. Come closer. Let me direct your step. Y'all think it's an accident you're here? No, you have to know God has directed you here. You ain't got that, you ain't got that kind of faith? Y'all play the lotto? Y'all play the lotto? You got faith. You got, because your chances of winning the lotto is real slim. But y'all still out there playing. Boy, when I hit that thing, y'all got stories. When I hit that thing, I'm going to we going to go, girl. We going to go, we going to retire. I ain't going to even call them. I'm just not going to show up. We got that kind of faith, don't we? But you got to have the same kind of faith when it comes to God. Listen. 
Daniel and these three Hebrew boys, listen, they're going to teach us. They're going to teach us how, how, listen, how to know God. Because they were, listen, they were slaves. They had a crazy king who had a wild dream. They wouldn't tell nobody the dream or the interpretation. And they were waiting on God's response in the midst of danger, in the midst of the impossible. They were waiting on God to respond. Anybody waiting on God to respond? I need him to come on with something. I said, I tell him all the time, Lord, you, you need to come on with that. You, you look slow. Praise the Lord. <laughs> he ain't move. He'll move. When he's ready, he, he move. listen, he tells me, he, he talks to me, he tells me, hey, son, don't worry, I got it. <laughs> you just keep being obedient. This ain't your job. All right, let's see. All right, so, so, so listen, so we want to pursue God. We want to know him. Because when you come to church, you get in life groups, you're going to get knowledge about God. But what do I do with the knowledge? Let me tell you. Here's what you do, all right? Because we want to get rid of this, this, this fear of time. Here's what you, we must believe that God is sovereign. Does that sound familiar? We, we said it last week. That's why. why. <laughs> all right, praise the Lord. Well. No, we said it last week. God is sovereign. That means he knows and foreknows all things. Therefore, he will have, listen, this is, this is really good. He will have the last word in both world history and the destiny of every man. He is going to have the last. Y'all see that? So what we fear, what we fear, what we don't know. When God is sovereign. Come on, man. I mean, think about that. He is sovereign. Let me, do I have a scripture there? Yeah, I got to read this. Oh, this is so good. This is, okay, now remember, he, read, he wrote in retrospect, all right? That's, what, that's how Daniel wrote. So he's telling us the story after the story has happened. And he's telling us, hey, look, here's the reality. I'm going to give you the whole story so you get it. So listen to what Daniel said. During the year King Jeho- Jehoiakim reigned in Judah, King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon came to Jerusalem to besiege it. The Lord gave him victory over King Jehoiakim of Judah. Listen, did y'all hear what that just said? Who gave him? Who gave it to him? Now, why, why, would, why would Daniel write that? Yeah, I hope you got it. Why would Daniel write that? Because no one had victory over Jerusalem or Judah. They couldn't defeat them. The biggest of armies couldn't defeat them. So, 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 so Daniel is telling us, if this happened, it happened. Why? Because God permitted it. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Y'all just missed it. I thought, I thought y'all was locked in. I thought y'all was locked in. So he said, so Daniel said, hey, listen, the only way this happened is God permitted it to do. Otherwise, it would have never happened. God permitted it. He said, God, he said, the Lord gave him victory over Judah. In other words, God permitted it. And then, listen, and it permitted him to take some of the sacred objects from the temple of God. So Nebuchadnezzar took them back to the land of Babylon, the land of Babylonia, and placed them in the treasure house of his God. Now, we know all of that. See, all of that means something. Because before, when they did stuff like that, their gods would come and be fell on the ground, arms fell off, head fell off, nose and fell off. All kind of stuff happened when they put God's holy uh, uh, objects in the, in the presence of their little fake gods. So God even allowed the objects to go and sit in the temple. That's what Daniel's telling us. He said he allowed it all. Somebody say sovereign. So what's happening in my life, Pastor? He's allowing it. He allowed it. I hope y'all are getting this. He knows. All right, so listen. So my knowledge about God leads to overcoming thoughts. It's, the, it's what Daniel had. He had overcoming thoughts. That's why he's writing in retrospect. He said, Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar didn't have no power over God. He said, no, God gave him that. What did God do? He removed his presence so Nebuchadnezzar would not fear. That's all he did. He just removed his presence. And said, okay, go ahead. <laughs> That's what Daniel said, because the only way that happens is God lets it happen. The only thing, way things happen in your life, God allows it. You got fired from your job, God allowed it. He told me to quit. I didn't want to quit. I was making good money. Quit. I used to sit in the, this is the honest of God truth, I used to park in the parking lot. It was time for me to quit. God told me to quit. He said, quit the job. I ain't quitting. I ain't never quit. I ain't never quit a job. I was making good money. I was on the, you know, I was on the, I was 40 for 40, you know, 40 for 40, executives, all. Our company was going up. I was in the right place at the right time. God said, quit. I used to sit in the parking lot and cry because I, I just got all of a sudden, listen, this is the honest to God truth. 
All of a sudden, I did not want to be there. And I didn't know why. My boss came to me. He said, uh, Darren, I don't feel you. I don't feel you. That, that means I ain't have no, I, should, I always had ideas. Hey, you know, we need to do this. And what about this? And what can we do with this? And then, and then I took some, uh, he gave me some other stuff to do. And I took it and it blew up. He said, ooh, ooh, we started getting, we, you know, we started getting really paid. He said, what else, what, else can you, what else can you come up with? <laughs> right? So God told me quit. So I told God, okay, just give me some time. He said, no, I need you to do it. Give him two. He told me this, two months and quit. I said, mm. So he fired me or, or, or downsized me. That wouldn't have never happened if God didn't permit it. See, listen, if you, if you don't think like that, you don't have overcoming thoughts and you don't know God. Because if you're living your life pleasing to him, you've committed your life to him. He's controlling what's happening in your life. I'm going to tell, tell you all a good story when I, at the end. What happened to us this week? God, let, uh, God allowed it. I was mad all week, a half a week. <laughs> Can I tell you, baby? Can I tell you? I had to pray. Mike had to help me out this morning. I was <laughs> no, li- listen, knowing God helps us accept divine permission. Come on, man. Divine permission. I was telling my son about this. I said, son, he said, dad, I get, so every time I get like I'm ready, I'm, something happens. I got to fight an injury. I got to, I said, Miles, you have to understand that God allows it to happen. He allows it. They couldn't even attack Israel without God's permission. They were afraid of Israel. And Israel, little small, little something, something. Them big old armies came and the angel showed up. And the angel killed 162,000. How many of them? There's a whole, a, whole, a whole lot of them. Angel killed. One angel killed all of them. Come on, man. So everybody was afraid of Israel. They had heard of Israel. They, before Israel got there, they knew about it. Hey, don't mess with them. They got a God. He don't play. And see, we have to think. That's the mindset. That's the overcoming thoughts I'm talking about. We have to have those type of thoughts. Hey, if this is happening in my life, God, I know you permitted it. So I'm, I'm just going to submit to you and say, well, whatever you, say, whatever you want me to do, I'm doing it. All right? Come on, we got to go. What else? What else? Until we, again, we're talking about how will our pursuit of God help us overcome fear of time? See, see, because the enemy starts messing with you and talking to you about things happening in your life and making you afraid. No, no, no. You got to talk back. Somebody say, talk back. Talk back. You got to say something back. Hey, shut up. God is orchestrating my life. He's moving me around the way he believes. I know it don't feel good, but I trust him. <sighs> Come on, what else? Listen, listen, number two. We, which we, we got to know God, right? We got to know him. Meditating about God, that's calling things back to your mind. Thinking about these things. Like, like Daniel, how many of y'all, y'all, y'all got to read the Bible? You can't be thinking about God, you want to read the Bible? <sighs> you got to read the Bible, you got to get in reach. Some of y'all need to get in reach. Or finish reach. Or get in the life group. Right, because you got, listen, your thoughts about overcoming, they don't just show up. Not in this culture. We got too many notifications coming to our phone. Turn them off. There's too much. There's stuff you don't even know about, need to know about. I got a notification this morning about somebody, where? Philadelphia shooting. I said, see, why they show up on my phone? I got to figure that out. Hey, I don't need that on there. I don't even know about that. I know people shooting. I know folk going to get killed. I know folk acting a fool out there. I know it. I know folks got demons in them. Some of this stuff these people doing, these are demonic activity. I don't need to know it. I know it's happening. I don't need it on my phone. Somebody said meditate. What does that mean? I mean, listen to this. Be willing. If I'm going to meditate, think about God, call these things that God has done. Some of y'all need to write a, 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 a spiritual resume. We'll talk about that later. But be willing to give your life in service to him. Come on, man. Be willing to give your life. Do, do God really have your life? Have you told him, Lord, I give you my life. Everything I do, I want it to glorify you and honor you. That's what Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego did. That's what they told to the king. Uh, I don't know if this is scripture. Is this, script? this is it. This is script. Okay, we got to read it. We got to read it. I know I'm running out of time, but y'all going to have to. Y'all still with me? So, so listen. So, so, so Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego was in trouble. They, 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 they didn't bow down. The king told them to bow, bow down. They said, we ain't bowing down, king. So Nebuchadnezzar, this is what they said, oh, Nebuchadnezzar, listen, 
We do not need to defend ourselves before you. Stop right there. Stop right there. When was the last time you told something happened in your life? I ain't going to argue with you. <laughs> you might have, you know, I got a bad, you got a bad report. I ain't arguing with you, bad report. I fear, I ain't arguing with you. Right, because I know what he's doing. He's got this. When was the last time you got, come on, you got to talk back. They, they're talking back to the king. Hey, we ain't going to we ain't gonna fuss with you. I ain't fussing with you, king. I ain't got enough pastor. You understand, we don't have no money. Don't worry about it. Next week, we're talking about the fear of lack. You need to be here. It's going to be good. But listen, they said, we ain't going to even defend ourselves. We ain't going to fuss with you about this. Listen, if we are thrown into the blazing fire, the God whom we serve is able to save us. He will rescue us from your power, your majesty. <laughs> but even if he doesn't, we want to make it clear to you, your majesty, <laughs> that we will never serve your gods or worship the gold statue you've set up. Oh, my God. Listen, that's what I mean when I say, have you given your life to Christ? Have you really given it? Listen, they say, hey, we don't care what you do. We don't care how you say it, how you spin it. We ain't bowing. And our God is able to save us. But if he don't, we still ain't bowing. <sighs> I'm going to the Pentecostal church because right now they hit that organ. And I'll say, yeah, hey, I ain't bowing. Come on, man. No, and see, most of the time, folks are afraid. I want to give up. What, what I got to give up? Listen, there's nothing in this world. Y'all better hear me, you young folks. There's nothing in this world that's better than what God has planned for your life. Come on, sir. Nothing. And I'm not up here preaching high in the sky, you don't get rich. I ain't preaching all that. That's up to you what you do. But what I am preaching to tell you is that he has a better life for you. Better than anything you can imagine to draw up. Better if you just give it to him. He'll take you places that'll blow your mind. He'll, he'll put you in company of people you blow. Listen, you don't, you don't have to do it. You, you ain't got to do it. You don't have to try to do it. He'll do it for you. He, listen, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, and Daniel is talking to the most powerful man on the planet at that time. How did they get in his presence? God put them there. So he'll put you in places where he wants you to be. Don't fret. Just be obedient. That's all. Be willing to give your life to him. Most Christians ain't totally sold out. No, we do good on Sundays. But when we, get, when we go some other parts of our lives, we don't look like we look on Sundays. Well, well, praise the Lord, Pastor. Come on, man. No, listen, some of y'all need to ask God, hey, are we really? Because you know how you got a girlfriend. When me and Les were dating, I had to tell her, hey, it's me and you, right? We had to make sure it's just... You ain't taking no more phone calls, right, homegirl? <laughs> that little black book you have. Look, I, I, I done gave her mine. You can have my book. There you go. You can take all them numbers. She threw it in the trash. I said, where yours? I need to see it. I need to see it. I need, to have it. I need proof. Why? Because this is just me and you, girl. Me and you, right? Me and you. She said, okay, all right, all right. Yeah, okay, good. Praise the Lord. But listen, God's the same way. He, he, wants, to, he wants you to, he wants to say, hey, is this just me and you? Are you what you doing? Why are you doing that? I gave you the gift. So what are you doing with it? I'm going to do it and I'm going to take it and do it with something else. Why? You're wasting your time. Oh, y'all missed it. Y'all missed it. You, listen, listen. You're wasting your days. You're wasting your activities. You're wasting your events that's supposed to be happening. You're wasting it. Somebody say Meditation. See, that's what thinking about God, thinking about these sermons that you're listening to, thinking about uh, the notes you're taking, meditating, bringing them back to you, the things that God, that's why you need to write a spiritual resume. I'm going to help. We're going to do one before this series is over. We got Easter coming up. We're still going to do it. Praise the Lord. We're going to write a spiritual resume of all the things God has done for you. And we, I'm going to show you how to do it. How to, because listen, we got a natural resume. We, we, we talk about how good we are, what we do, all those wonderful things, right? Yes. So, so why not just have a spiritual, all the things God has done? Just to remind you so that you meditate on these things. Cause, come on, man. Listen, we are here to serve God and him alone. That's why we're here. I'm not, I'm not, I, I wish I could be doing a whole lot more things than preaching. But this is what he wants me to do. Oh, thank you, Noah. Praise the Lord. No, Noah said, that's right, Pastor. <laughs> come on, man. Listen, so, so, so the knowledge we get from the scriptures about God causes us to be zealous. Uh, when was the last time you told somebody about Jesus? 
Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego was talking to the king. They weren't scared. No, man. Listen, the more I know about God, the more zealous I get. The more zealous I get. The more I want to say something to somebody, hey, hey, oh, you know, what you know about God? If I, listen, if I talk to somebody, I'm, 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 I'm listening to them, but at some point in that conversation, I'm, I'm, I'm fishing. They call this, in, in the computer world, they call it fishing, trying to get more information. <laughs> you know how the people call your house, and they say, hey, uh, can you do this? They try, they're fishing. They're trying to get your stuff, right? Well, I'm fishing. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to tell somebody about Jesus. I want to know where they stand with God. Hey, what y'all doing? Where you, where you stand with God? I want to know. I'm fishing. But, but as Christians, that's what should be our M.O. Here they, here they come. Here they come. They used to call us the three Hebrew boys when I was in the military. Because it, it, was, it, was it was about eight of us, eight to 12 of us. And we were, we were discipling each other. They were, most of the guys were more, older than me spiritually, so they were helping me out. But when the other brothers saw us coming, they called us the Hebrew boy. Why? Because they know we're going to preach. Then they started calling me Bishop. Bishop! Come here, Bishop! <laughs> you know you know how they're they going to clown you, right? Bishop, stand for the bishop. Everybody stand. Please stand for the bishop. And I'd be like, shut up, man. Shut up. You need to get saved. You're going to hell. That's what I'm telling <laughs> See, in them days, I, listen, they'll probably sue me for some of the things I told them. You're going to hell. Everybody, your whole family going to hell. Your mom and them, they're going to hell. All y'all going to hell. <laughs> All right. I got, I got to go back to All right. Come on. I'm going to number three. I got to go. I got to go. Listen. So how are we, listen, again, we're talking about pursuing God to help us overcome the fear of time. We got to understand who we're dealing with. My, I guess we'll stop here. We'll stop. Will we stop here? Uh, all right, listen, listen, listen. Prayer. Because, see, our pursuit of God, trying to know who he is, it leads us to a life of prayer and praise. Yeah, yeah. How much time do you spend in prayer? This, is a, this house, this church is a house of prayer. Yes, God told me, build me a house that will pray. Yeah. We ain't where I want us to be, but we're getting there. Listen, the things that happen in our lives should cause us to want to spend more time. When I hear stuff on the news, it makes me want to pray. <sighs> All right? So prayer causes us to have great energy for God, which leads us to protecting his honor. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. <laughs> Come on, man. I ain't got time to read, but it's Daniel 6 and 8. The, uh, King, this is King Darius. He had put a law because, you know, them kings, they got full of themselves because they own, you know, they had half the world and people were bowing down and people were saying, your majesty, you're a God, all that type stuff. And, and, and uh, Daniel, Daniel refused to bow. Matter of fact, he turned up his prayer time. He went the, three times a day. That's what the script said. All right, it says, and now your majesty issue and sign this law so it cannot be changed. An official law of the Medes and the Persians cannot be revoked. So the king signed the law. But listen. But when Daniel learned that the law had been signed, he went home, knelt down, as usual, in, in his upstairs room, his apartment, with his windows open toward Jerusalem. He prayed what? Three times a day. Three times a day. Just as his, he had always done, giving God thanks. Y'all see that? Yeah. So the people got mad. They went and told the king, hey, Daniel, they're praying. You said him to bow down to the king, bow down to the statue. But Daniel, in there praying, he shouldn't be praying. No, listen. Prayer was Daniel's way of responding to God. It was his way. So what happens when we do? It's the same thing that make disciples of men. It's when we encounter God, it should make us want to more spend more time with him. It's what happened to, to uh, Peter and Paul. Because listen, what God does when he comes to your life, he introduces himself, he comes to you, you know, he wants to be your friend. He wants to teach you and show you about him. It happened, to, it happened to the men that he was, he was discipling. Peter and Paul, uh, Paul, Peter and John and James, even Lazarus. The Bible said J Lazarus was Jesus' friend. That's what Scripture said, right? Jesus cried when Lazarus died. <sighs> Why? So listen, so all that means is when he comes into your life, he comes into your life to teach you, to help you, to show you. That's what prayer does. So when, when things happen, I pray and then I praise. Why? I'm not afraid. Well, we're afraid. This, this might not happen. What, what if this doesn't happen? You got to know, hey, you're 40 years old, and you're not married, and you won't have kids. And, hey, listen, what, I give it to God. I leave it to him. I come to his house. I worship. I ain't worried about it. I ain't worried about that. We shouldn't fear the events and activities and things. About, we shouldn't fear. No, why? Because we have a friend that knows. 
Come on, you ever got any friends? My friend know. My friend know. They know what I'm going through. See, Jesus, he knows. He said, I, I got you, homie. I got you. Chill. Just chill. I got you. All right? All right? Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> Listen, when I met Leslie, I had made up in my mind I was fasting women. I was. I was, I was not dating anymore because I had some bad experiences, some cray crays. If you don't know what a cray-cray is, Google it. You'll, you'll get it on the way home. I had some cray-crays. I had some weirdos. And I was like, I ain't dating no more. And my pastor called one day. I had preached on my Sunday night. She, and I came down after I had preached. And she said, it's time for you to get married. She grabbed my hand and prayed right there. Bishop got up. He was talking. She was laying hands on me praying. She said, it's time for you to get a wife. It's time. I said, oh, no, I'm fast. I ain't she said, boy, it's time. Now, within months, she showed up. Listen, I'm, I'm, I'm just here to tell you, all God wants you to do is just, hey, trust me. Know that I'm the one sitting things in order. It ain't the world, it ain't happenstance. You know, it, things just happen, whatever happens. No, not for your life. It's him behind the scenes. You need to listen to him. My last point, I'm done, I promise. I'm skipping all that, y'all just, okay, I'll get the next one. He, you, uh, we, we must trust his wisdom, which he works out through our journey of trust and obedience. Y'all got that? Right? We got to trust his wisdom. His wisdom is him putting things in place. When you can see, you'll see wisdom after the fact. When you look back and go, oh my God, that was God all along. Oh my God, whoa, that was God all along. Woo, did y'all say, oh my God. We were, listen, it was so bad. It was so, one time me and Leslie, we, had, we were struggling financially. I had to get, I had to go to the kids' room and steal their money out their piggy bank just to pay something. I don't know, pay them some bills. I mean, it was, it was like three pennies left in there. I said, praise, praise the Lord. It was tough. But I go, when I go back and look, I say, man, God was testing us because right after that is when he began to really bless us. Right after that. But he, listen, he was looking for our obedience. Well, can I trust you with what you're asking me for? All right, what else? Well, last point. I'm done. My last point. Am I preaching too much? Oh, wait a minute. I'm all off, ain't I? Yeah, I don't know. Anyway, that was the, that was the last one, right? We must trust him with wisdom. Yes, so we must trust him with wisdom. And, and, and I got to read this scripture. But then I'm done. I promise this is Daniel 6.5. Listen to this. He says, it says, then the other administrators and the high officers began searching for some fault, fault in the way Daniel was handling government affairs, but they couldn't find anything to criticize or condemn him. He was faithful, always responsible, and completely trustworthy. So they concluded our only chance of finding grounds for accusing Daniel will be in connection with the rules of his religion. Y'all see that? So he, they said, we gonna, we, what we going to do? We, we can't get him to do nothing stupid. So we're going we gonna to make him do something he don't want to do that's against his religion. That's why we have to trust God's wisdom and we have to be obedient to him and know that he's behind the scene working. It's him working. Let me tell you this story. We're done. done. This week, I went to go pay my, uh, my house note. I got up, paid the house note, paid the bills, logged on, and I'm looking at this number on there like, what in the world? What is that? That's wrong. I said, oh, messed up something. Let me go. So I tried to change. I, knew, I thought maybe I said, maybe they think I'm late. I ain't late. I'm ahead. So I said, okay. And I always pay over, right? I always pay over because I'm pay, trying to pay my house off. And I'm thinking, that, that ain't, what is wrong? What's going on with this here? So, so I said, what in the world? So I, so I called the bank. Say, hey, what's going on? I said, this, I can't change this number. This, this ain't my mortgage. And the lady said, well, oh, no. There was an increase. I said, uh, it was what? She said it was an increase. Listen, our, our mortgage jumped $700. And I said, oh, no, you didn't. Oh, no, you didn't. And you devil, you. You going to come out this computer? In the name of the Lord. And if you at the, I come down there, I come down there at the, at the branch and get you. You better come out. And so when I talked to the lady, she says, oh, no. She said, what happened is, see, listen, we like all this building. Matter of fact, let me tell you some statistics. I know I'm over, but it's okay. Listen, last year in Cobb County alone, 162,000 families moved here. Cobb County alone. That's not included Atlanta, Jackson, and some of the other Calhoun, where it's, they're, it's, they're experiencing an explosion of people just moving. And they say it's not stopping. Listen to me. It's all good to sell your house, but if you've got to live in your house, it, your, your, it's going to go up. Even if you're renting, Savannah said, Dad, our rent went way up. I said, that's why. 
Because what they do is, see, the value of these homes go up. And they tax you based on the value. Yes, sir. It's not even real. But they still tax you on it. They're guessing, but they tax you on it. So I got mad. I said, oh, I ain't paying it. I ain't doing that. And you ain't coming to take my house. You come. I, I went off. When I, when I finished going off, the lady explained the process, told me what to do, told me how to handle it. So I filed for my homestead exemption. If y'all ain't, you ain't got it, you, you need to get it. And he said, uh, uh, they, they told me what to do. And, they, and I said, I, I got to live with this. He said, yeah, I was hot. Me and my wife ain't got no extra 700 Listen, I just took a pay cut. I took a pay cut in the church. I don't have 700 So I said, Lord, what am I going to do? Listen, I was hot, was I hot? She had to talk me off the ledge. When she talked me off the ledge, I sat down. Where did I go? My prayer closet. Yeah. Went in my prayer closet to talk to my, my father. He, as soon as I walked through the door, he said, this is, what I need, this is what you need to do. Do this. Wow. Okay, Lord. All right. So we called the bank. Said, hey, can I, can, I, can I do it like this? He said, yeah, you still can do it. Here's what you need to do. Why? Because he's behind the scenes. He, listen, he had to give me some money to, before it happened. Or I, I, I don't know what I'd be doing. So he took, he did his part to help us before. So now I got to go fight with him tomorrow to try to get some more help. But God said, just do it like that. Don't worry about it. I got the rest. Listen, people of God, it's what the enemy does. He masters in trying to get us to be afraid of things we can't control. Bow your heads. Father, we thank you for this time, this moment, for the word that we heard. Help us not to just to be hearers of this word, but to be doers of it as well. We love you. We praise you. We thank you. In Jesus' name. If you're here today with your head, head bowed, eyes closed, you're here today, you don't have a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, and today you want to make a decision to really give your life to Christ and to follow him. I ask you to raise your hand. We just want to pray with you to make sure you know that you are, you are really saved, you really know who God is, and that God is going to do something in your life that you've never experienced ever before. Amen. Well, Father, we thank you for everyone that's here, the sound of my voice, who already know who you are, love you, want, want to know more about you. I pray for our hunger, that our hunger never goes away. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, we ask you to stand. If you're here and you, you need a good church, we believe we're a good church. God is doing great things with us and for us and among us. So we're so, we're so we're so happy about that. But if you want to be a part of our church, right after service, just come on up. We want to give you some information. We'll send you to the Central Hub, give you some information what it means to be a member of our church and um, how you need to get in a life group to help you. And we also have, I, I, they, had, they missed that, missed some steps. I was supposed to talk about next steps. They missed that. We also have a Next Steps class to help you understand what it means to become a member, to take you step by step by step to be a, a member of our church, all right? That'll happen before you go. Well, you can go to a life group anyway, but we, in order to work in a church, we want you to go through that process, all right? Everybody good? All right, Father, we thank you again for allowing us to be here for this time we've had together. Bless us this week. Help us. We, we love you. We thank you for who you are, what you've done. Bless us as we leave this place, never your presence. We thank you in your son Jesus' name. Everybody say Amen. God bless you. Hug somebody before you leave. We got some sweets in the back. Enjoy some sweets. And we'll see you on Compassion Sunday next week. <laughs>